Lord, I left your name on high. Lord, I love to sing your praises. I'm so glad you're in my life. I'm so glad you came to save us. You came from heaven to earth to show the way from the earth to the cross. From the grave to the sky, Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I lift your name on Good afternoon. I mean, good morning. Welcome to the church at Made Sure at Mild, and we're glad each one of you are here with us today. See no visitors, but they are in. We want to show your honored guests. I hope each one of you picked up a bulletin. I'm not going to go over all things in the bulletin. I'm going to uh, let's remember all the shut ins that's in our bulletin. Let's remember our sick. Oh, also, there's one I am going to mention that's in the bulletin. If you look, it's a uh, Matthew Cruz, he had come here just a couple of years ago and he had found out he had cancer. And we need to remember him because he's having a rough time right now because we're turning back to him. And uh, so let's keep him in our prayers because uh, I know he's going to need it now. Also, uh, Barney told me that Justin and the twins are not feeling well, so let's remember them also. And, uh, so it's good to see Sandra and Bobby DeMarsh back with us today. Now they weren't able to be with us last week. Also good to see Rick and Deborah with us. And it's also good to see Tanya, you know, we get back out this morning with us. Oh, after our morning worship service, we're going to have our fellowship luncheon. So I hope each one of you stay and eat and enjoy the fellowship with each other. <clears throat> then into our worship service today, our song leader will be Joel Foster, our scripture reading by Ray Moore, our lesson by Dennis Strine, our closing prayer by Rusty Maddox, and we'll begin our worship service with opening prayer to be with Dennis Strine. Will you bow with me, please? Our God and Father in heaven, we are so thankful, Lord. For the blessing of being able to be here this morning, to fellowship with one another, and more importantly, Lord, to worship you in the spirit and truth. You have blessed our lives so richly. Each and every day is a blessing that you provide to us. A new day each and every day to get things right, to make things right, to improve ourselves. And we're just grateful, Lord, that you've seen fit to give us the starting of a new week and a new day. We're mindful, Lord, of, of those of our number who have been battling illnesses for a long time. We're grateful that some are here this morning. 
We just pray that you'll be with all of them, continue to heal them, watch over them, comfort them. For our brother Matthew, we pray that you will be with the doctors who are attending to him, that they will be able to get things all under control with the medications that they are providing so that he can avoid the surgery that could be in his future. We're just grateful, Lord, that you are hearing and listening to our prayers, and we're just asking, Lord, that you answer them. Answer them, Lord, in our time frame. Answer it, Lord, when we would like to have them, but we understand and we know that it will be your will when these things are done. We thank you for our opportunities. We pray that you will help us to make the most of them. We pray that you will continue to be with us as we worship you. May our hearts and our minds be kept at bay on the things that are outside and to focus entirely, Lord, this time on you and what you have given to us and done for us. We're thankful, Lord, for the blessings of life itself, for our children, for our grandparents, for our mothers and fathers, for our brothers and sisters in Christ. We truly are a family. Help us, Lord, to be that positive influence for those around us and for our nation. For without the influence of good Christian people, our society will decay beyond repair. But with that being said, Lord, even today, we pray that you will send your son quickly. Take us away from this evil, Lord, and we pray that you will see fit to give us the reward you have promised. And while we try, Lord, we often fail. And in those failures, Lord, we ask for your forgiveness. Help us to do better. Continue to be with us each and every day and to guide our steps in all that we do and say. In your Son, Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Before I heard, before. 
Supper in Christ alone. In Christ alone. <clears throat> In Christ alone, my hope is found. He is my life, my strength, my song. This cornerstone, this solid ground, firm through the fiercest drought and storm. What heights of love, what depths of also I delivered unto you that the Lord Jesus the same night in which he was betrayed took bread and when he had given thanks he broke it and said take eat this is my body which is broken for you this do in remembrance of me after the same manner also he took the cup when he had supped saying this cup is the new testament in my blood this do ye as often as you drink it in remembrance of me for as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show the Lord's death till he come. We'll now have a prayer for our bread. Dear Heavenly Father, we pray that we'll keep our thoughts focused on Christ as he suffered and bled and died in our stead as we prepare now to partake of this, the bread, which does represent his body. May we be found pleasing as we partake. In Christ's name we pray. Amen.
Now we'll continue the prayer for the fruit of the land. Please pray with me. Almighty God, Jehovah, our Father in heaven, we'll thank you <laughs> for the gift of thy son. As he was taken and nailed to that cross and raised up. And in death, the soldiers came and pierced his side and out forth flowed the blood. Look, it washes away our sins. As we drink of this cup, we remember the sacrifice that our Lord and Savior made on our behalf. And we give thee eternal thanks. For Christ Jesus, we pray for you. Includes the Lord's Supper. Another part of our worship service is given back to the Lord as He's commanded each one of us as we have prospered. If you would, I'd like to read 2 Corinthians 9 and verse 7. It reads, Every man according as he has purpose in his heart, so let him give, not grudgingly or necessity, for God loveth a cheerful giver. We'll now have a prayer for all. Our kind Heavenly Father, we're thankful for this opportunity that we have to give back a portion of what thou has given unto us. Let us all do this in a manner pleasing unto thee. Christ, in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Right in the corner where you are. Right in the corner where you are. <laughs> <laughs> 
Do not wait until some deed of greatness you may do. Do not wait to shed your light afar. To the many duties ever near you now be true. Brighten the corner where you are. Brighten the corner where you are. Brighten the corner where you are. Someone far from harbor you may guide across the bar. Brighten the corner where you are. Just above the clouded skies that you may help to clear. Let your narrow self your way depart. Though into one heart alone may fall your song of cheer. Brighten the corner where you are. Brighten the corner where you are. Brighten the corner where you are. Someone far from harbor you may guide across the bar. Brighten the corner where you are. Here for all your talent you may surely find a need. Here reflect the bright and morning star. Even from your humble hand of bread of life may feed. Brighten the corner where you are. Brighten the corner where you are. Brighten the corner where you are. Someone far from harbor you may guide across the bar. Brighten the corner where you are. <laughs> Waiting for my God. Waiting for my God. In the silence of my heart, full of cares that never cease, seeking answers in his words, words of love and promised peace, for life is hard. And hope grows dim. I need my God for strength within. I am waiting, waiting still. I am waiting for my God. In the trial. I am 
Matthew 7, verse 24, Jesus said, Everyone who hears these words of mine and does them is like a wise man who builds his house on the rock. When we, our spiritual house is being beaten by the storms of life, our house will stand if we put into practice the things that Jesus has taught. We've heard many times that we are the salt of the earth and the light of the world. That is what Jesus is getting to in Matthew chapter 5. In verse 1 it says that seeing the crowds, he went up on the mountain. And when he sat down, the disciples came to him. Those who are the salt of the earth, those who are the light of the world are those who are poor in spirit, those who mourn, the meek, 
those who hunger for thirst, for righteousness, the merciful, the pure of heart, the peacemakers, those who are persecuted for righteousness sake. These are the ones who influence our world. These are the ones who make our world a better place to live in. You see, salt and light are good influences. The word influence was originally used in reference to the ethereal fluid flowing between the stars that held them into place. This was alluded to in Job chapter 38 and verse 31. Later on, man began to think that this fluid flowed from the stars down to man and affected the attitudes and actions of man. This is where we get our astrology from. But influence is the act, the process, or the power to produce an effect without any apparent force or direct authority. And there are many who feel and believe that they have no influence at all. But this is not true. Every one of us has influence. But regardless of how small an influence we have, our influence has its effect. And that effect is far-reaching. Sociologists tell us that an individual over a lifetime influences at least 10,000 people. That's either directly or indirectly. They also say that their influence will continue to be actively felt for about 150 years or more. Now we're not talking about famous people. We're not talking about people like George Washington or Abraham Lincoln or Dr. Martin Luther King, but ordinary people like us. You know, Eve had only one person to influence. And yet her influence changed the world. And we still see the effects of that influence. And we can change our influence, but we can't stop it. We are going to influence others, but the question is how? Will our influence be for good or for evil? Will we be the salt and the light, or will we lead others in the wrong direction? Friends, there's nothing more impressive than the sheer dynamic influence of a pure Christian heart. Being the salt of the earth, we are distinctive. Salt is a positive force. You can't ignore it. It influences everything it touches. And we can tell when we're eating our food if there's any salt in it or not. Salt is never neutral. Jesus told his disciples that they are like salt. When salt comes to town, people find it out. But when it leaves, the people will miss it. Peter reminds us in 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9, that we are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people. And we are to be distinctively different, not just by the church's name, not by worship without instruments, or a distinctive church government, but by being the salt of the earth and the light of the world. Being good stewards of our personal influence. When we are these things, people will notice. We pretty much understand 
that salt is a preventative and it is a preservative. It is a purifying agent and it imparts its wholeness, wholesomeness on whatever it touches. Salt as a preservative is not used as much as it used to be. We have refrigeration to take care of the things uh, that used to be salted and stored away. There was a time when meat and certain vegetables were kept from spoiling by salt or a salt brine. Those who Jesus was talking to knew exactly what he was saying. What would our country be like if you removed all the influences for good? Remove the Christian father and mother from the home. What kind of home would you have? Is that what we're seeing today? You remove godly people out of the church, and what do you have? Feuding and fussing. Get rid of godly people out of the nation, and what happens? Friends, Noah's family was saved because of his influence. All it would have taken to salt Sodom and Gomorrah was ten godly people. A nation is not made by its commerce or its military might, but by the Christ-like character of its people. As Elisha was watching Elijah ascend into heaven on God's chariot in 2 Kings chapter 2, in verse 12, Elisha said, My father, my father, the chariots of Israel and its horsemen. What he was saying was, There goes the defender of this nation. There goes the one who stood between Israel and ruin. You see, Israel wasn't protected by its diplomacy. It was not protected by its army or its war chariots. Israel was protected and her real army was the one who wore the prophet's mantle. He was the one who walked around the country calling men, women, boys, and girls back to God. Friends, without the salt of godly influence, civilization as we know it would have crumbled long ago. It was that search for rightness, that search for the religious freedom that led to the birth of this nation. But if it ever fails, it will be because we have lost the influence of Christian principles and behavior. Salt loses itself as it salts. You know, my dad's family in Indiana, they raised hogs and chickens. A lot of chickens, a lot of hogs. Every fall, they would butcher a lot of those hogs. And the smokehouse would be full of the hams and the loins. And they would take that ham and stuff, and they would rub salt all over it. And then they would wrap the meat in brown paper. And that brown paper would then be covered with salt. Every place in that smokehouse would be salt. And that's all you could smell. But after a few weeks, you go back to that smokehouse, and most of that salt had disappeared. There would be greasy spots on the paper. You couldn't smell the salt anymore, but just a hint of the hickory smoke on my hands. Friends, that salt had actually given itself to the preserving and purifying process. The salt expended itself in the very purpose for which it was purchased. In John 12, verse 24, Jesus said, Unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, 
it remains alone. But if it does, it bears much fruit. We are the salt of the earth and the life of the world. But are we willing to allow God to use us, to expend us for the purpose for which he created and purchased us? When we sing the hymn, I surrender all, are we singing it because it sounds melodious? We love the harmony and the music, or do we sing it because we really mean it? In verse 13 of Matthew chapter 5, Jesus said that the salt can become useless when it loses its taste. That its saltiness is good for nothing but to be thrown out, to be walked all over. During those times in Palestine, people threw their garbage in the streets. You know, some of that garbage would be eaten by the hogs. And these people understood exactly what Jesus meant by throwing that salt out in the street after it became useless. But this is what Jesus was talking about. We can pollute our influence for good to the point that we are useless as an influence for God and his righteousness. Chemically speaking, salt is sodium chloride. Sodium chloride cannot lose its taste but it can be polluted to the point to where it does become useless. The same thing can happen to us. That's what happened to the Pharisees. In Matthew 23, verse 15, Jesus saying this to the Pharisees, he says, for you travel across sea and land to make a single proselyte. And when he becomes a proselyte, you make him twice as much a child of hell as yourselves. Well, let's look at the churches of Christ. Revelation 2 and verse 4, the church at Ephesus. They lost their first love. So they lost their saltiness. In chapter 3, verse 16, the church at Laodicea. They became lukewarm. They lost their saltiness. They were coming to church. They were worshiping God as prescribed in the scriptures, but that's all they were doing. Of those seven churches of Asia, none exist today in its original form. They lost their saltiness. Christian without a good influence is a contradiction of terms. Just like salt without taste. It's an oxymoron. It does not exist. Let's finish up with the light. Light penetrates. Light illuminates. I've got a little tiny flashlight at home. I had. And you can stand on my back porch and light up the whole backyard with that little tiny light. You can even see farther if you direct or focus that light to a point. A small light will penetrate the darkness no matter how black it is. A Christian heart can penetrate the blackest heart. Sometimes it is the influence that a Christian has that can be more powerful than the gospel message itself. I'll give you an example of this. During the great floods in North Dakota, Minnesota, and Canada in 1997, our church basement was completely ruined. 
the floodwaters came up to the first landing that would go up into the auditorium. We couldn't meet there. And so we were meeting at the chapel on base and we met there long enough for us to be able to get back into our building. And one of the members was married to a man who attended sometimes but never obeyed the gospel. But during this recovery period, he was influenced, not by the gospel message itself, but by the people of the members of the Church of Christ in Grand Forks who worked hard together and had an overwhelming desire to return to our place of worship. He saw us working together. He saw the brothers and sisters in Christ who traveled hundreds of miles to work free to get us back into our building. The carpenters, the electricians. It wasn't long after we returned to the building and started worshiping that he obeyed the gospel. It wasn't the gospel message that turned him around, but the influence of Christians working together and showing that Christ-like attitude. This is the same thing that Peter alludes to in 1 Peter chapter 3 in the first five or six verses or so where he talks about wives and husbands, the influence that we have on one another. And the other thing about the light of influence is that we must let our light shine, but never shine our light. And there's a difference. The Pharisees, they loved to shine their light. They liked to go out into the streets and pray where people could see them. They liked to have people precede them, blowing horns and creating a racket so that people would come and see them giving to the poor. They didn't care about the poor. They just wanted to be seen caring about the poor. They loved the chief seats in the synagogue. This is the difference between letting our light shine and shining our light. Jesus is the light, and we are the reflectors. Just as the sun is the light and the moon reflects that light. The moon does not give off any light. It reflects it. It's just a dark hunk of rock. And the world can tell the difference if we are shining our light or letting our light shine. Shining our light is a negative influence. Reflect, reflecting the light of Christ is a positive influence. The way it should be is the way that Paul looked at it in Galatians 2 and verse 20. I'm not going to read the verse. You're familiar with it, but I will paraphrase it. Paul said, when you look at me, you're not seeing Paul anymore. You're seeing the Christ who lives in me. And that's what we should be seeing in one another, the Christ that is living in us. Our influence is a positive thing. And I pray that we will personally resolve to use it in a way that we will maintain our saltiness and our life. What influences you today? Is it the outside world and everything that it has to offer? There's one thing about that influence, and while it, in and of itself it may not be evil, but when this life is over, where is it? It's gone. It's not going to be loaded in our caskets. It's not going to be some Egyptian pharaoh burial where they're going to put all that stuff in a tomb with us so we can take it with us. It's gone. All the pleasures of the world 
when it's done and over, we realize it's not pleasurable at all. Is that where we stand today? If you're not a child of God, what would it take to influence you to become that child of God? Would it be the light that is shining, reflecting off of all of us to influence you to make that decision? If it's not the gospel message, could it be that light and the influence of the brothers and sisters here? But it is a choice that must be made. Because if the choice is never made, one day it will be too late. There will be no second chance. If it is your desire to obey the gospel today, we want to give you that opportunity now. And if you are a child of God, and if you've lost your saltiness, if, if your light has become dim to the point it looks like the headlights of a car whose battery is about to die, and you need to be reinvigorated. There's a way that you can be influenced to change. We want you to do that today. Who are prayers? If anyone has a need this morning, we pray that your thumbs together and stand and we sing. <laughs> My sovereign will have last had yielded. I would be thine and thine alone. And this the prayer my lips are bringing. Lord, let me be thy will. Oh, oh, oh. 
Good to see everyone that's here this morning. I'm sure some of you toward the back have been smelling the food. Uh, we do have a fellowship meal immediately following the service. We encourage you to stay and be a part of that. But this time, we'll be dismissed in a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we're thankful for another day to live on this earth. We're thankful for another opportunity we've had to be able to come together and worship Thee on this another first day of the week. We pray that You'll continue to be with those that are sick, the ones that are shut in, the folks that may be struggling in life. We pray that You'll You'll be with them and be with all those that minister to them. We're thankful for the folks that's been able to be back with us, that's had ailments or sicknesses. We're, we're thankful for that. We pray that you'll continue to be with those as well. We pray that you'll continue to be with those that, that watch over us and protect us in each and every way thankful for them and we're thankful for their families. We pray that you can continue to strengthen and comfort and guide them each and every day. We pray that you'll be with us now as we prepare to leave this place to keep us safe as we leave here and pray that you'll bring us back to the next point in time. So forgive us when we fall short. It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. <coughs>